district safety plan public hearing. Um, Pam, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Mr. Ginster. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have our second public hearing of the night. Um, <clears throat> each year we have to review and update our district emergency preparedness plan. Um, so I want to provide a little bit of clarity. Um, so we have at the district level what's called the DEPP DEP or district emergency preparedness plan. Our buildings, right, each have what's called an ERP. ERP or emergency response plan. The ERPs at each building follow very closely the district emergency preparedness plan. I would say that the, the district emergency preparedness plan is essentially the skeleton of, of the ERPs, but the ERPs um, have a lot more meat on that bone in terms of specific details about what we do in the instances of emergencies. So that is why our district emergency preparedness plan is public, yet our emergency response plans at the building level, level are kept confidential. So I wanted to make sure that that was very clear and stated up front. So what I'm talking about tonight is our district emergency preparedness plan. All right, so um, our timeline is very similar to that of our code of conduct. Um, the uh, Timeline had our 30-day public comment from July 24th to August 24th. There is a little bit of information on the slide before that. Because our SRO contract is an addendum to the District Emergency Preparedness Plan, that needs to have its own process beforehand, be finalized, um, so it can be included in this as a part of this um, uh, full document. So tonight we're having our public hearing, and we hope that the board will take action tonight and approve this plan. All right, so our district safety team is comprised of these individuals. Uh, we have representatives from the Board of Ed, our administrative team. We have representatives from specific buildings for specific reasons. Greg Manns as the uh, Faculty Association President, Heather Smith as the principal here at the Mid Lakes Education Center, and Jack Hober because of his involvement with the Aquatic Center. Um, our, we have a secretary, a nurse, we have representation from food service, facilities, transportation, and we have our two school resource officers. All right, so recent developments for um, regulation 15517, in your printout it does say 1557. I want to clarify it's 15517. Um, and transposing that from one document to the next, I missed the one. So it's uh, Commissioner's Regulations 155.17 uh, updated uh, the requirements of our District Emergency Preparedness Plan. There were four things. Our drills that we run have to be what's called trauma-sensitive or trauma-informed, and we'll get to what that means in a minute. We have to have effective communication to parents and guardians surrounding our drills, and we have to have an establishment an implementation of a threat assessment team, as well as including bus drivers and monitors on our district safety team. All right, so trauma-informed essentially means that when we conduct our drills, that we are not going to cause undue stress, anxiety, and potential trauma to our students and staff. And what that really means is that we're going to communicate to staff and students that we're having a drill before we have that drill. So, you know, throughout the years um, with different things happening nationally, there has been this discussion about whether or not you should warn um, students and staff about a drill because if you don't, that makes it a little more real and authentic. Well, the state ed department and com the commissioner came out and said, yeah, but it's still not okay to, you know, um, overtly cause trauma for children and staff and keep those things a secret. So 
we will disclose, which we always have done in Mid Lakes. We let our students and staff know that drills are coming when they are. So when we run these drills, it's not a surprise and we don't cause it undue stress. So this was a pretty easy update for us. Um, we added language into our uh, safety plan. Um, it's this, whoops. It's that verbatim, avoiding tactics and training or drills that may introduce or activate trauma, such as the use of props, actor simulations, or other tactics intended to mimic a school shooting, incident of violence, or other emergency, or inclusion of developmentally or age inappropriate um, content. So we're not going to do those things, okay? Uh, nor have we, which is nice to know. Now regarding um, parental communication, we do have a section already in the District Emergency Preparedness Plan that talks about our method for um, parental communication. In terms of drills, um, we are going to allow our parents and guardians to know that a drill has happened at the conclusion of the drill. And this comes down to um, student and staff safety. We're not gonna tell people when we're gonna be outside, right? That wouldn't make any sense for us to disclose that beforehand. We will disclose that after the fact. That way, that message can go home before the school day ends, and then parents and guardians are aware that a drill has happened prior to their child getting home. So if their child says something about the drill that day, then our parents are aware that there was a drill, and if the, the child had some sort of negative, um, uh, negative outcome of that drill, they were scared or something like that, then at least our parents will be armed with the knowledge that a drill has happened that day. So we're gonna communicate that immediately following our drills. Uh, another development was that we needed to um, add the implementation of a threat assessment team. So our current uh, emergency preparedness plan does have language that outlines um, the idea of threat assessment and, and gives pretty vague procedures about that threat assessment team. We spent all of last year uh, with a focus on threat assessment. We brought several administrators to a training through Ontario County um, that was a, a free training because it was grant funded. And we had um, members of our administrative team as well as our counseling office staff in each building trained on threat assessment. We reviewed various um, forms and documents of, of other districts and their threat assessment procedures. We adopted and adapted those procedures to match the needs of Mid Lakes, and we actually engaged in um, a specific threat assessment protocol uh, last year in various situations. So we're gonna continue that process this year. Um, we hold those documents confidential, um, but we do have a threat assessment protocol in place at this point in time. So again, this update um, isn't anything that was too big of a lift for us because we were already working on it. And then finally, um, the inclusion of um, the transportation department, bus drivers and monitors in the safety plan. We already have the director of transportation on our district safety team to bring the voice of our drivers and our monitors to the table. Um, so we leverage um, our director of transportation to meet that requirement. So, these are the highlights of our emergency preparedness plan. Several of these um, have been in place for a long time. Each year, you can see on the last three bullet points, in uh, the 22-23, we had to add the communicable disease protocol. In 23-24, we had to add language surrounding emergency remote instruction. And this year, we had to add uh, language about trauma-informed drills. So each year we're paying attention to the updates and the regulations and making the appropriate adjustments within our um, district emergency preparedness plan. All right, so our in some of the nuts and bolts of the DEP, it outlines the um, incident command system, which essentially says who's in charge, when they're in charge, and who they're gonna be communicating with to manage um, the incident. And the key here, is our incident command structure. We are the incident commanders, essentially until such time we're relieved by law enforcement. And when law enforcement arrives in a true emergency situation, they then take over. And that is um, per the county, that is per state, um, our state police. So when law enforcement arrives, it's their scene and we're no longer managing it. We start to manage the school side of things. 
All right. Okay, so just a, a few odds and ends related topics. We're gonna continue to implement and refine our threat assessment system this school year. Um, one of the new additions in last year's safety week, and we're gonna push it forward to this year's safety week, is the district um, safety team engages in what's called a tabletop drill. I use the term novel emergency situation. So I try to come up with a situation that is both realistic, but at the same time offers some novel twists because I want our administrators and our safety team to kind of be challenged with managing a safety situation because none of these situations are easy. So last year our tabletop was, uh, I mimicked a power outage that happened around 2002 and there was uh, a software glitch in Ohio that literally made the grid crash from New Jersey. It was like the entire Northeast. So we use that as an example of what we would do on a really cold winter day, right? So that was our novel situation. Um, I have an idea for this year. I'm not gonna say what it is because I wanna keep the admin team on their toes. Um, but we've introduced this idea of a tabletop drill to make sure that we're kind of practicing these skills at least annually. And then finally, um, quite a while ago, Carl, we used fund balance in what budget cycle to purchase the new uh, radios? Last year's budget. Last year's budget. So it took us about a year. So we, we have our new two-way radio system up and running fully, which includes um, repeaters that strengthen the signal and increase the quality of communication over the entirety of campus. Um, you can even bring these two-way radios a good distance from campus and still get good reception um, for internal communications. I'm not gonna go into any more features because we wanna leave those confidential because we wanna make sure that people can't leverage any of that information to do uh, any harm or evil. So those are sort of the related topics there. So at this point, you know, we have any questions from the community, any questions or comments from the board regarding our district emergency preparedness plan. All right, thank you. I'm sure you don't skip anything, okay. I would like to adjourn the district safety plan public hearing.